just contemplating on what to share today. What's, what's the, what month are we in today? Anybody know? January, the first month of the new year. What could I impart to you as your pastor to help you face the new year? I think I entitled it for our sound man, Confidence to Face a New Year. We could call it Facing the New Year with Confidence. How's that? About the same thing. Let's pray. Father in heaven, I believe that you laid this in my heart to share. Hide me behind the cross and help me to share it in a simple way that everybody can get the truth out of it. In Jesus' name, amen. We're believers. You can't do something that God can't fix. You can't make a mistake he can't fix. You should be the happiest people on the face of this earth, knowing that. God can fix it. Lord knows how many bad mistakes and choices you'll make. How many did you make last year? How many you think you're going to make this year? <laughs> That's why I want to talk to you. I want to help you. Because we all do. We all make wrong choices sometimes. And God still loves you, even though you make wrong choices. He'd prefer you to make the right choices, especially choices that involve him. But so quickly, it's easy for us to find other ways to try to solve our problems. We go to the Old Testament. We find here a man by the name of Moses. By faith, he left Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who was on scene. Now I want to talk about how did Moses see him who was on scene? Scripture says that no man ever seen God. Moses desired to see God. In fact, God hit him in the cleft of the rock and he passed by. And Moses just got to see the hinder part of God. You know, someday we'll be able to see God. We'll be able to see him. We get a new body. You got to have a new body to see God. This body can't see God. It's impossible. I've often thought, what's God like? What is God the Father like? I think he is pure energy. I can't think of another way to describe him. He made the sun. He's brighter than the sun. We don't understand his brightness. And we can't in this body. Our new body will be able to, but not in this one. Can't see God and live. It's impossible. Not in this body. Now, God revealed himself to Moses in a lot of different ways. He used Moses to lead his children out of Egypt. And so he brought the plagues. And God, he was able to see God's power in the plagues. It was the... He saw him in the burning bush, the bush that was burning and yet not being consumed. There was all kinds of ways that Moses was able to see God. And this is why we want to look at his life. Why should we even care about what the Old Testament? Well, because the Old Testament was written for our admonition, our example, to help us. Because the things that happened then still can happen today in your life. God desires to lead you just like he desired to lead his own people, Israel, out of Egypt. He desires to lead you today. Hardship is one of the Lord's tools to develop our spiritual maturity. Mm. Paul said no suffering is good at the time. No, suffering. But for us, suffering doesn't need to be wasted. We can learn many things from suffering. We learn many things through hardship. Sometimes there's some ways, there's only one, one way for some people to learn is hardship, the hard way. For, unfortunately, it was that way with me many times. I would have, I, I shift, but I had just taken my father's advice. No, I thought my, my way was better than his. His was tried and proven. It was experience telling me. But why is it that we have to experience our own problems? Why do we got to do that when it's not necessary? But so many of us do anyway. Don't take advice. We don't take advice, do we? 
it says, James says that when you encounter these things, when these things happen, consider it joy when you encounter these trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance. And let endurance have its perfect results so that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. Wow. I can't imagine how many of you would like to find yourself in that place. Lacking in nothing. A little bit like when the kids say it's Christmas time. What can we get you for Christmas? Nothing. Nothing. We don't need anything. Do you understand? Isn't that the way it should be? Isn't that the way it should be in your life? Lacking nothing? Lacking nothing. I have God. That's all I need. He's promised to supply everything that I need. What do I need? And the older you get, the more you realize you don't need a lot of things. We've seen that in the life of our parishioner that went home to be with Jesus. She didn't want for anything. She didn't need a lot of material things to make her happy. You all knew who I'm talking about. She didn't need a lot of stuff to make her happy. She was perfectly content the way she was. She didn't need anything else. That's what I'm talking about. Lacking nothing. The reason Moses could endure is because he saw God. He saw him in so many ways. And you don't realize that how many times you've seen God. And didn't realize it. He was there in your life helping you all along. So here's a few things that I want to share with you. How do we see that which is invisible? Well, you can start by opening up God's word. I know some of you have done that. And, and when you open up God's word, you should say, Lord, help me to understand this passage I'm going to read. Help me see something I've never seen before. Speak to me. Make yourself real to me. As a pastor, I want, I, I'd want that for each and every one of you. I want God to make himself real to you this year. Real. Real. Just like you see me stand in this pulpit. I want God to reveal himself to you and make himself real to each and every one of you. And a good time for that's when you read his word. When you see people like Joseph and Moses and David and Daniel and Paul, and you see what God did for them, he wants to do for you. Well, you think they're special people. No, every one of you are special. God gave you a fingerprint that's different, and that's how I know you're special. Because everybody's fingerprint's different. So you're special. I want you to identify the works of God around you. Once you see his ways in the scriptures, you'll be able to start to see his ways in your life and in the life of your friends. And you'll be amazed at what God can do to your family when you seek God and put him first. That's another portion of scripture. That's Matthew chapter 5, throwing them out. Put God first. Put him first. You'll be amazed at what God can accomplish and do in your life. Thirdly, seek a closer walk with him. Seek a closer walk with him. I believe this is what Jesus meant when he said, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. They shall see God. Now, this doesn't mean that you're sinless or that you will reach a time in your life where you'll be in perfection. That's not what this scripture means, pure in heart. It means a clear conscience. Quickly repenting of things that you know, maybe that you said or did that that wasn't right or that wasn't nice. That wasn't kind. I shouldn't have said that. That wasn't very kind. When you're quick to respond to that and say, Lord, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Be quick to respond to those things. Be quick. Ask him to take it away from you. That's how you can be pure in heart. That desire, you see, what made David different is his desire. He loved God, and he desired to do what was right. And when he did things wrong, he repented. He did try to hide. 
his affair with Bathsheba, that didn't work out too good for him. God sent a prophet and straightened that mess out. But you see, if you study the life of David, you'll see David had a heart for God. He had a pure heart. He loved God. He desired to follow him. And God knew that. That's why God chose David, because David was a man after God's own heart. You can be that man. You can be that woman. Just say, Lord, I'm sorry. I'll try to do better tomorrow. Seek a closer walk with him. Commit him to your plans for tomorrow. And so what difference will that make in your life? Well, let me give you a few things that will make a difference. If you're willing to commit your plans to him, you will view life from a whole different perspective. Instead of thinking always about what you lack, you will focus on those things that you're capable of doing. Mike talked about it in Sunday school class, those talents and gifts that you already possess, you already have them, you're already using them, and you're better at it than anybody else because you have a special fingerprint and a special gift, and God loves you because you're special. You're special. Nobody else can do what he called you to do. You're special. You look at your, your talent that you've got and you enjoy it. You just enjoy it. But you don't realize that somebody else would be put in your shoes. They'd hate it. They'd absolutely hate it. If I had to work with concrete, I'd hate it. I thought about you because you see, and you know, for him, it's, it's easy. No, Lord, don't call me into that. I don't want to touch this stuff. I don't like it when it gets in my fingers. I can't get it off. It's like paint. It's awful stuff. You know what that's like, Elroy, huh? You can work with it. God gave you special gifts. You're special. I know you're special, and I'm going to let you be special because I don't want to do it. <laughs> but I'm glad God has special people. Imagine what life would be like if we didn't. Then I want you to be in obedience. Your obedience will make the things of God more desirable than worldly pleasures do. I want you to kind of think about praying this way. God, draw me to yourself so closely that sin has no appeal to me. And let holiness be the attitude of my heart. I can tell you, you'll get excited about God's love. You'll get excited seeing the devotion that God has for you. You'll get excited to see his willingness to show himself real in your life. And that's what I want for you this year. I want God to show himself real in your life. Lord, be real to each and every one that's here in my presence. And you'll begin to see things as they really are. You will have a discernment to see through the lies of Satan about what really truly brings satisfaction. You'll have greater discernment in all of your, your relationships. The eternal will gain priority over the temporal. And the older you get, the more that happens. Things of this life become strangely dim in the light of his glory and his grace. That's important in contrast to those things that have lasting value. You begin thinking about how best to invest the resources you have, your time and your money and your talents for God's eternal kingdom, for that will all make a big difference when you draw your last breath. That will make a big difference on how you spend your time and your talents. Did you use them for yourself or did you use them to help somebody? Criticism and misunderstanding no longer will affect you in the same way. It's not pleasant to have someone speak evil of you. Judgments will no longer affect you in the same way. When someone says something bad toward you, it won't affect you the same way because you're walking closer to the Lord. You're walking closer to him. Isn't that wonderful? Every head bowed, every eye closed. 
I hope this message today will help you in this new year. Study his word. Have a desire to be closer to him. Pray. Be concerned about others more than yourself. If you want joy, put Jesus first, others second, and yourself last. But I pray that this message will be a help to you. It will help to encourage you to always do the right thing and will give you the eyesight you need to be able to behold what is true and what is false. Because Satan's lies abound in this world. And we need to abound in the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And he'll help us to see. Give us eyes to see and ears to hear. Thank you, Lord, for this opportunity I've had today to share your word. It's time to go home. Be with each and every one as they leave this place until we come back again. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody said, amen. Lord bless you.